Hey all, it's Matt, your average gamer, and this is going to be the art of dexterity. This is all about how to craft and optimize powerful dexterity builds that also, by the way, are a ton of fun. Dexterity is becoming one of my favorite damage stats, and there's a lot you can do with it. We'll be answering many questions in this one. We're going to be going over a ton of different things in this video and answering a lot of questions you may have about dexterity, like how does dexterity work? How do you boost it? How much damage can we get out of it? How to build around it in every way, shape, and form? There's going to be a ton of information in this video. It's actually probably one of the best videos I've done in a long time, especially since I love dexterity. We're going to talk about lightning affinity and how that works too. Of course, we're going to be talking about keen affinity, everything dexterity related, all the information you need to craft and optimize your own powerful dexterity builds. And that's how this series works. It essentially is going to be your kit, your guide to build and craft your own powerful dexterity builds. Just like the faith one I did and the arcane one I did. We're going to talk about how to get as much damage as possible as your dexterity builds too. Including lightning, keen affinity, and we're even going to work with the hand of millennia too. I honestly can't wait to start this one. There's so many fun dexterity builds in Elden Ring. It has to be one of the most fun stats to use. Dexterity has never let me down in terms of having a good time, and you can get a lot of damage out of them while also doing a ton of different things with dexterity. Of course, we'll be going over the soft caps and good stats, how to optimize your stats to get the maximum amount of damage you can out of dexterity. We're going to go over the soft caps, everything you need to know there to make sure you have the correct stats, and this is the art of dexterity. This is going to be a fun one, so sit back, relax, and hopefully we'll have a good time making some dexterity builds. We're going to start here with the soft caps. In the primary soft caps we're looking to hit here are 60 and 80. 70 dexterity at rune level 150 is solid. I've noticed that's kind of a sweet spot. Try to hit a minimum of 60 dexterity when using keen or lightning affinity. You can pause this on the right as some information about dexterity, but generally speaking it works with successive and quick attacks. Like most of these videos for the crafting, I'm going to slow down my talking so I explain everything clearly. First things first, we're going to pick the Guardian Sword Spear, which is amazing in keen affinity with an A and massive base damage. The Sword Spear is truly a phenomenal keen weapon, and for our Ash of War, we're going to pick Repeating Thrust. This is great because it builds up on successive attacks and it'll do a lot of damage with our awesome Guardian Sword Spear. Next up, we're going to look at our tier. As for our options, there's really only one that stands out here. That's going to be the Thorny tier. That builds up on consecutive or successive attacks, rather, and that's going to be perfect for having a fast Ash of War like Repeating Thrust. Now, in Elden Ring, you can stack one body and one aura buff. For our aura buff, we're going to pick Golden Vow, which is going to give us 15% more damage and 15% more defense. Then we're going to grab Flame Grant Me Strength as our body buff for 20% more physical attack. It adds 20% more fire damage too, but that's not going to help us here since we're not doing a fire build. Let's jump into talismans. We're using a weapon art here, and we are using the weapon art button, so Shard of Alexander is automatically going to boost this by 15% more damage. Now we've got a couple of options here, but for our second talisman, Melissa's Prosthesis is going to be great because that's going to give us 5 more dexterity and more damage on successive attacks. This is a perfect talisman for this build. And on to talisman number three. For talisman number three here, again, we do have a couple of options, but I am going to end up picking Rotten Wing Sword Insignia or regular Wing Sword Insignia works well too and stacks with Melissa's Prosthesis. That'll stack with Authority Tier 2 and gives us more successive attack damage. For the last talisman, we can go for some defense, or in this case, I'm going to use the Green Turtle Talisman, which will allow us to regen stamina at a faster rate. That's going to help a lot with the dexterity build. You can also use the Ritual Swords Talisman for the last slot for 10% more damage when you're at full HP. For the buffing order, we're going to drink our tier first, which has the Thorny tier and Faith tier in it. After that, we're going to cast Golden Vow because it's relatively long, and then use Flame Grant Me Strength. Alright, let's check out the power of a pure dexterity build, something that builds up on successive attacks that we're not using bleed or anything for. We're going to go over Blood Flame later in this video, but for the first one, just repeating thrust here and physical damage with the awesome Guardian Sword Spear. And yeah, we're getting a ton of damage already. The second and third hit, the, the final hits basically of Repeating Thrust are giving us two, 3,000 damage. That's pretty incredible. That dragon went down relatively fast with a powerful, pure dexterity build in Keen Affinity. And you can do this with a lot of fast type builds, the same exact setup, because we're building up on successive hits. Keep that in mind with a lot of these builds. Dexterity works best when you're using fast weapons. Next up, we're going to learn how to build with Blood Flame. Now, Blood Flame is an incantation that will add bleed and works best with weapons that have innate bleed on them. For this, we're using the Nagakiba with Double Slash, and since we're attacking fast again with Double Slash, we're going to grab the Thorny tier here. 
That's a perfect tier for this build and we'll add some damage to Double Slash because again, we're going to be building up on successive hits relatively quick with a powerful Ash of War like the one we're using here. And for our aura buff, once again, we're going to pick Golden Vow. We mentioned this earlier, but that's 15% more attack and defense, and it's relatively long too, so it's a very, very good incantation, one of my favorites. And we're going to be adding Flame Grant Me Strength as our body buff, and lastly, we're going to grab the incantation for the extra bleed, Blood Flame Blade. Now that adds a flat 40 bleed. It has a little bit of a buildup effect on it, but overall it's going to add, generally speaking, 40 bleed, and it does not change with whatever seal you're using or any scaling on the seal. It's a flat rate as far as the bleed goes. Now we're going to grab the white mask here because that's going to add 10% more damage when there's blood loss in the vicinity. That's going to be perfect for us and since we're using a weapon art once again we're going to go for the shard of Alexander in the first slot for 15% more damage on double slash. Well, we have the white mass, so what's the next step? We're going to grab Lord of Blood's Exaltation. With the added bleed from Blood Flame, we're going to be proccing bleed relatively fast. That's 30% damage now with that talisman and the white mask in total when blood loss is in the vicinity. Now, if you're noticing a common theme here, Melissa's Frostesis is one of the best talismans for dexterity builds. Five more dexterity and building up on successive attacks. That's going to be perfect in that slot. And for the fourth talisman... We're going to go with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, or if you're not on New Game Plus or Beyond or haven't had a friend drop it for you, you can go with the regular Wing Sword Insignia in this spot, or even the Ritual Swords Talisman, which works too. Let's try out this build with Blood Flame Blade. So the buffing order is going to be drinking your tier, casting Golden Vow, and then next after you cast Golden Vow, you can fill up your FP, use Blood Flame Blade, and then Flame Grammy Strength is the shortest duration, so use that last. Alright, let's see how much damage we get out of Double Slash with Blood Flame Blade. And the whole animation gives us over 8,000 damage with Blood Flame. That's pretty incredible. We're able to take out the two regular enemies here as well. That's quite impressive for a Double Slash build. And you can add Blood Flame to most innate bleed weapons to get a really good amount of damage. Go with Keen or Heavy Affinity if you're on a Strength build. You can build around it and turn it into a very powerful bleed and dexterity build. Next up here, as requested via a poll, I did poll this, we're going to build around the Hand of Melania, turn it into something really powerful. We're actually going to end up using the same build that you saw at the start that absolutely destroyed Moog and start building around this weapon and turn it into something really good. Now once again, we're going to show that we're attacking fast, which is what we're going to build around, but I do want to mention one thing real quick. These videos, I know they're not the biggest deals in the world, they're, all, they're not going to be everyone's cup of tea in terms of making builds and whatnot, but if you do enjoy them, be sure to comment, let me know what you think of the video, if it helped or not, and share it of course too, and definitely be sure to sub also. Yeah, I love this series so far. I made a playlist for it, by the way, too, so you can easily find all three. I'll attach the other two in the description below. So far, we did Faith Arcane, and now we're on to Dexterity. For this build, of course, we're going to grab the Thorny tier. As you saw, the animation on the Ash is very fast. And let's start making a really powerful Hand of Millennia build. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to use Golden Vow as our aura buff because, man, I love Golden Vow. It's fantastic for cast and forget. But for our body buff, we're not going to use Flame Brent Strength because they won't stack. Instead, we're going to use Blood Boil Aromatic. Blood Boil Aromatic will give us 30% more physical damage. Unfortunately, it's a consumable, so I don't use it that often. But for this build specifically, since we're doing mainly just physical, pretty much exactly just physical damage, this is going to increase our damage a lot. And I think Blood Boil is perfect for Hand of Melania. For the first slot, we're going to pick the Shard of Alexander because it's a weapon skill. That's going to be perfect for this build. Let's jump into the second slot after we use the Shard of Alexander to increase the weapon skill by 15%. For the second slot here, we're going to go for something that's kind of been obvious so far that we used in two other builds. We are going to go for Melissa's Prosthesis, five more dex and successive attack damage buildup. A truly amazing talisman for dexterity builds, and definitely the one you want to get on your first run because you can combine that with Wing Sword Insignia, and then your second run, maybe grab Rotten Wing Sword Insignia when you jump into New Pain Plus, which is incredible. And that's going to be our second talisman here, by the way, is going to be Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. And of course, or regular Wing Sword Insignia. Now, you could use Lord of Blood's Exaltation, but keep in mind, this weapon has very low bleed, particularly on the weapon art. You're not going to get a lot of blood loss out of this weapon, so it's not a great talisman, although it does work too, because it's, it is an increase of 20% if you do proc bleed. And lastly, I want to continue making this more damaging, so I'm going to go with the Ritual Swords Talisman, which will give us 10% generic damage, more generic damage at full HP. That's perfect here. Alright, now we're going to get into a fight with this dragon here. First things first, we want to equip Blood Boil Aromatic. That lasts about a minute, by the way, so it has a decent duration. But even with that said, Golden Vow is going to be longer. So you're going to drink your tear, use Golden Vow, and then use Blood Boil Aromatic. 
So it's a similar order, although keep in mind Blood Boil Aromatic lasts longer than Flame Grant Me Strength. So that's something to keep in mind when you're building around something with Flame Grant Me Strength last. In this case, Blood Boil is still going to be last, but it does have a longer duration than Flame Grant Me Strength. All right, let's immediately go into battle with this dragon, which is going to be slash resistant. So you got to keep that in mind. They're about 35% slash resistant, which is the damage type that we're doing. But let's see how much the weapon art gives us around 7,000 damage in total. It is the same build and setup that you saw obliterate Moog at the beginning of this video. Hand of Melania can be a really good weapon. It just doesn't do a ton of bleed, even with the 50 innate bleed on it and the weapon art. But it does build up on successive attacks and has a high damage ceiling. Now it's time to talk about Lightning Affinity, which scales with Dexterity. Lightning Affinity is an awesome affinity, especially when you're doing something like this, which we're going to turn it into a powerful jump attack build using Lightning Slash, and we're going to go over how this works too. Now we're going to pick the Raptor's Black Feathers. That piece of armor is going to increase our damage when we're doing jump attacks. It's going to be perfect for this build, and if you notice, I made sure I had 51 poise, which is the first poise threshold. The second one, I believe, is around 101, which gives us decent poise to take regular attacks. All right, let's start building around lightning jump attacks. Once again, here we have two options this time. We have the thorny tier or the lightning tier. In this case, though, since we're doing successive attacks, I'm going to go with the thorny tier, but the lightning tier would be solid too. And that's because, of course, we're doing lightning damage. Now, for our aura buff, we're going to grab Golden Vow. Once again, I mentioned earlier, 15% more attack and defense for close to two minutes is a very solid buff. And for our body buff, flame grant me strength so we can boost some of the physical damage. Now for our Ash of War, the perfect Ash of War for us for this specific build is going to be Lightning Slash because that's going to add a coat of lightning on the weapon that's going to give us more AR. We're going to put that on both Bandit Curve Swords to get over 700 AR on each one. It's going to end up turning this into a really powerful lightning build. It ends up working out quite well. I've done this build on my channel before, but I wanted to go over the idea of the concept behind this build and basically how to boost lightning damage in a dexterity build, especially working around fast attacks. Now I mentioned we're going to make a jump attack build, which makes the first talisman slot really obvious for this build, and that's going to be the claw talisman, which will also boost our jump attacks, and that will stack with the raptor's black feathers. Now for our second slot, we've got a lot of options here, but since we're doing lightning damage, I want to boost the lightning damage in some way. Whatever elemental damage type you're doing, you should always use that scorpion charm, especially if there's a decent amount of it. In this case, there's a decent amount of lightning damage, so we're going to equip the lightning scorpion charm. Now, some elementals minimal. Say you're using the Ruins Greatsword, the Magic Scorpion Charm wouldn't do much for you. But here we have a lot of Lightning Damage that's being boosted, especially with our extra buff and Lightning Slash, so it's perfect for the Lightning Scorpion Charm. For the second slot, we're building up on successive attacks, so we're going to go with the best Dexterity Talisman aside from the Shard of Alexander here. Once again, Melissa's Prosthesis, five more Dexterity and more damage with successive attacks. All right, now we're starting to turn this into a really powerful build. The last slot here, you're going to use the Wing Sword Insignia or Rotten Wing Sword Insignia because we're going to be building up on a lot of successive hits, especially with the jump attack since we're hitting four times on our jump attacks. This is another favorite build, by the way. I've done this one with Flame Art Affinity and Flaming Strike, which is incredible. One of my favorite builds, but I enjoy this one with Lightning too on the Bandit Curve Swords. They do get a C in Dexterity, but it's pretty awesome overall. Now, to activate both with Lightning Slash, you need to two-hand the offhand one and then go back to Power Stancing. On Xbox Series X for me, for two-handing, I think it's Y and LB and then Y and RB back. That way you two-hand the offhand one, activate that, then go back to power stancing and, and activate the main hand one. As you can see with the buff, we have over 700 AR. A lot of lightning and a decent amount of physical damage too. We have over 300 physical damage. We have over 400 lightning damage. Pretty incredible. I didn't want to fight the troll because I felt like that would be a little bit boring. Dragons take extra lightning damage, but they are resistant to slash. So let's take on the dragon here. Now for a buffing order here, we're going to drink our tier, cast Golden Vow, and then use Flame Grant Me Strength. After that, you're going to activate the offhand one, activate the main hand one, so they're both imbued with lightning, and then we're going to fight this dragon. And let's see how much damage we do with our jump attacks, successive hits, whatnot, all the lightning damage. And we're doing pretty well, 1800 damage there. I believe we're at 46, so another 2800 damage on the third jump attack. And this is a great way to get in some lightning damage. We ended up taking the dragon down relatively fast. They have around 10,000 HP, by the way. All the footage for this video is on New Game Plus 7. I mainly only play on New Game Plus 7. Now, some really cool weapons to try out on Keen Affinity. The Nagakiba or Starting Katana will get an A. The Guardian Sword Spears A, plus its massive base damage. The Zui Hander is actually really good in Keen Affinity. Flails are really fun to use. Raptor's Talons, Flambers, Straight Swords, Curved Swords, and of course Twin Blades as well. 
Some cool weapons in Lightning Affinity. Executioner's Great Axe because you could turn it into the Dragon Slayer Great Axe from Dark Souls 3. Bandit Curved Swords, which you saw. Twin Blades, Curved Swords, and of course Katanas. And the best Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Melissa's Prosthesis, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, or Wing Sword Insignia, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Green Turtle Talisman, Claw Talisman, Best tiers in equipment, Lightning and Thorny tier, White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, of course, and Armor that hits 51 poise, unless, of course, you're going for a Light Roll. Alright, you know this last part if you've seen the first two crafting videos. We always take a build that I've done on my channel, and then we break it down. We are going to break down the Bolt of Grand Sacks build and talk all about the Bolt. So for the Bolt of Grand Sacks Ash of War, and mainly the damage on the weapon, it's going to scale with Dexterity. As far as Lightning and Weapons goes, it's Dexterity based, but when you use Incantations, it's going to be Faith based. Now, if you notice, I'm able to hold down the button for a long time. In this case, in a rare weapon for a Dexterity weapon, this weapon's chargeable, which means it's boosted by the Godfrey icon, giving it another 15% when it's charged. And since it's pure lightning damage on the Ash of War, which is very visibly clear, we're going to be able to buff that with the Lightning Scorpion Charm and Lightning Tear. Hal is going to boost this generically by 25%, and Hal Shabiri is the best buff you can use for the Bolt of Grand Sacks. By the way, something to mention about the Bolt of Grand Sacks as a whole, it's an incredibly powerful weapon, but if you use Golden Vow and Hal Shabiri, you can increase the damage on its Ash of War by 40% in total, making a very good Ash of War even better. Everybody knows this weapon's no slouch. In a second here, we're going to go over the build, stats, equipment, everything you need to know. And we have the Bolt of Grand Sacks, preferably plus 10. Any seal for buffs, we did hit 51 poise. We have the Godfrey Icon because it's chargeable. Lightning Scorpion Charm because it's lightning damage. Ritual Sword Talisman for generic damage. Shard because it's a skill. Lightning Tear because it's lightning damage. Faith Tear for buffs. And for stats on this one, 60 dexterity is fine. I got to 33 faith with the faith tier. That'll allow me to use Golden Vow and Hal Shabiri to increase the damage. We have 60 vigor, 23 mind, 25 endurance, and we're getting a ton of damage out of the Vault of Grand Sex. An absolute must-try weapon for anybody that likes dexterity builds. Give this one a try for sure. And thanks for watching this one. I really enjoy everybody that's been tuning into the crafting videos. I'm going to attach the other two in the description below. Definitely sub if this helped. If this was informative and helps you make builds, be sure to sub. I also set this one up as a fundraiser. I really like animals, and it's one of the largest no-kill animal shelters pretty much in the entire country, of America anyway. So be sure to donate if you get a chance. It would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to do the next video. This crafting series has been awesome.